Hello QST readers and ARRL members worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, the author of the Ask Dave column in QST. With each month's column, I publish a supplemental video, and this is the video for February 2024. Uh, this column was entitled Ham's Love Antennas, and over here on the second page of the column, is a photograph of a gamma match. This is one way of matching your coax to an antenna. Um, this is a photograph of an antenna I have, which is this antenna right here. Now the gamma match is this. So let's walk out in the backyard where I got a little more room and I can explain to you all the different elements of that antenna. And then we'll be back inside and look at the gamma match itself. I mentioned in the article the gamma match on this antenna, and this is the gamma match right here. We'll look a little bit more closely. First, I wanted to tell you about the antenna itself. This is an, a beam for two meters from arrow antennas. This is the reflector. This is the driven element. And these two are directors. Okay, so they're slightly shorter than the driven element, which in turn is slightly shorter than the reflector. So those are the elements of this antenna. Now for FM, this would normally be mounted in the vertical position like this. If you were going to do any other mode on two meters, like CW or whatever, you would have it horizontally polarized. But this will go either way. Now the way this antenna is constructed, these are solid rods, and this is a hollow uh, tube for the, the boom. And then right here is the thing to attach it to the uh, mast, which will come up through it like that. Now what I want to do is go inside, and we're going to take a little bit closer look at this part right here. This is the gamma match. Your coax goes here. Okay, and again, the antenna is mounted vertically like this, okay? And the direction of radiation is that way, because these are the two directors. This is the gamma match right here. This is the driven element. This is the gamma match here. This is the uh, boom of the antenna. This is where it's mounted. To a mast. Now what I'm going to do is show what we have here. This is the connector. The inside element goes to a wire that's in here and comes out through here and then there's this uh, dielectric right here and that forms a capacitor with this. And the way you adjust the antenna, what we're going to do is take apart this gamma match so we can look at the pieces inside. I've had this antenna many, many years. They still sell this identical antenna, that arrow. If you're looking for a two meter beam, this will do you. That's a very good one. I've had good luck with it. This comes all broken down but it's just a long, thin package. And it comes with this mounting equipment here for the mast. Mast can be about anything. Like, for example, you can use a steel fence post top rail. Um, that'll get it 10 feet in the air. You can use two of them. That'll get it... 20 feet in the air. And it looks like it. Okay, come on. Now the instructions for this antenna come with the measurements for this thing. So, I don't know where this extra screw came from. <laughs> Obviously, it's a replacement for one of the ones that was originally there. 
I think these are number six machine screws. Now the other thing we need to take off is this. This is the clamp. So the circuit goes through the capacitor and then attaches to the driven element at a point out here where the uh, impedances match. Okay, so we can pull this. Uh, this part slides off. Okay. Now what we have here is if we take this thing out, here's what we have. We have the connection, center connection to this wire right here. Now you can tell how old this thing is. The end of this wire is already green, like the Statue of Liberty, which is corroded uh, copper. But that still works just fine. And it goes in here very easily and comes out over here once you film right in there like that okay so what we're going to do we're going to follow the that seems to be about the right place and we're going to put this in here and this, this tube is going to go slightly in here so it acts as an insulator so that the center does not short to the mast and then we've got this clamp right here and we've got we know where it was because we can tell where the clamp has made that uh, a different color and this was out a little ways now you adjust it two ways. You adjust the length of space here between the start and where it goes into the insulator. You do not want to press this element here all the way against the mass because this is hot and this is ground. Okay. And then we put these back in here and we've got the thing put together again. So it's important to remember that there are two elements I'm going to keep this out and get a shorter one. There are two elements to the, the tuning of this antenna. One is how much this tube overlaps this tube. Okay. And then where on here the shorting bar is. So when you get it from arrow antenna, they will give you some starting measurements and you will find that those will be just what you need. Okay? So there you have it. We've got a nice view of what the gamma match is and so on. A gamma match is a way that you can use to feed Yagi antennas. Actually, you can use it to feed almost anything. But generally, there are simpler dipole matches that we would use. But uh, this one works. It has the advantage of being an unbalanced to balanced match at the same time. So you don't need um, an un, un or anything like that after that. You can take that uh, straight down to your radio from there through your lightning arrestor, of course. So there you go. I would encourage you to join the ARRL if you're not already a member. And until we next meet, 73.